What's going on, Bud Mashers? I'm Mr. Gamer. And I'm Kitty the Fall. And welcome to SBR Reports, episode 14, Financially Forward Thinking or Sinking. Oh my. All right, and our first story is actually from Gizmodo. We have a apparently a, a really interesting not NES classic called the Super NT. That, I mean, that's not creative. That's I mean, not creative. Well, no, I don't think it's supposed to be creative. It looks, it's supposed to be expensive, apparently. But let's tell you what this uh, interesting hunk of plastic actually does. <laughs> Before the price. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently this is supposed to be a company um, analog, their answer to the SNES Classic. They released um, something original called the NT, which is, which is, which was in response to Nintendo's NES classic called the Analog NT. They released, they released the Analog Super NT. So you can play those super high def games because I guess you don't own a computer and don't Wait, have an emulator. Is this legal? Oh, of course not. Okay. Of course it's not legal. <laughs> All right. I'm waiting for Nintendo's hammer to come down so hard on this one so fast. I'm honestly surprised there isn't an update on this article right now saying, oh, and an update from Nintendo. Yeah, get rid of that. Like, I'm surprised they haven't just straight up killed it. Mind you, their, like, Analog's website, it looks nice and sleek. It has that Apple minimalist thing going on with it, but... We're not shady, but we're shady. I'm just, I'm just like, there is absolutely no reason for you to spend. Let me see how much is this thing actually. One hundred and ninety dollars. Yeah, so I'm not going to be spending one hundred and ninety dollars for something that, if I were a terrible person and you know stole things, I would just download an emulator for free and then download some ROMs for free. Okay, all of us has used LimeWire. You can't. Okay. <laughs> That was back in my days when I were when, when I was um Ill, Ill, Ill informed when I when I did know the rules of the internet and how many viruses I was giving to my mom's broke, computer. When you were broke and you wanted what you wanted. Yeah, trying to get trying to figure out, okay, so which copy of this P. Diddy song won't give this computer a virus? Oh, maybe it's this one. Nope. And then next thing you know, you're having a conversation about questionable content on the computer. But going back to <laughs> Things that are questionable. So this thing is $190, and mind you, that's not with a controller. The device actually has ports that you would normally plug a, an original NES controller in. But Mr. Gamer, what if you don't have a controller? Oh, well, that's fine. If you want one, you could definitely buy one for 50 bucks wirelessly, because I guess if you're going to be buying this thing for $190, you're made of money. I... I guess. I would assume, especially, because isn't this like you can play the games you already have? Well, yeah, so essentially, yeah, they make it to where you can in, you can download all the games you want onto it. Not Obviously, not all of the NES library, but quite a few, significantly more titles than you can on the original SNES Classic. On top of the fact of with this, with of course, with any sort of new device, there's going to be hack tools. There is one hack tool. Um, let me spell this before I uh, butcher up the name. H-A-K-C-H-I-2. Hacky, hackchi. Hack, hack, hackchi. This, this stop. This sounds like something from One Piece. That does. This stop. Okay. So essentially, <laughs> hackchi is a tool where you download this and then it overwrite the kernel of the NES Classic, where then you can put all of the other games that you want on there. So you could buy an NES Classic, basically rip out the digital guts and put else put whatever you want in there. Mind you, you also have the capability of bricking your console, so maybe, I guess? Uh, I mean, mind you... I'm, I still feel like this is definitely those for you who have, you know, the thick bottle cap nostalgia glasses sewn on to their, you know, sewn on to their face to even think about this. But this is also coming from someone who already has an SNES. So I'm pretty good in that department. Man. Like, I just, I don't, yeah, um, so yeah, if you want to, you can just go on to the website, um analog just simply google that and pick yourself up uh 
super NT. They, mind you, the controllers do look nice. Um, they do have the Famicom controller with the blue, red, green, and yellow buttons. They also have a transparent one. I know some are a little iffy on the transparency. They're not the biggest fans of it, but I, I guess it looks nice until, until, you know, Nintendo gets rid of it. So, uh, get them now while they last. And uh, 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 I, uh, I suppose a hundred and ninety dollars. I mean, plus fifty dollar controller. Yeah, plus fifty dollars for a controller if you don't already have one. So I guess maybe they they're selling it for such a high price because of the incoming lawsuit from Nintendo. Maybe you know what? That's smart. Well, <laughs> they know that they're going to. I getting... respect that. If you're going to be, if you're going to be shady, be. Smart about it. I mean, if y'all, if you know you're going to be getting in trouble for this, I might as well try to be make some real bank. Speaking of bank in a sort of kind of way, um, I'm sure that if you've been following me on all of the social media, you've noticed that there was an article released by EA with an update on the uh, on the <laughs> the killing of Visceral Studios and. I, 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 so I did do some, I did do some separate research into this, seeing what Visceral had actually done. And one of the biggest things that I found was that Visceral had apparently underperformed. Now, you're probably asking yourself, well, what are you talking about? They released wonderful games. One of the really big ones being Dead Space before microtransactions got shoved so far up its hoo-ha. Um, yeah, don't you love it when big companies pretty much give their studios the scythe to kill themselves with? No, no, actually, I don't. Oh, I, I hate that. <laughs> I, it, it's, it's actually one of one of my least favorite things. Yeah, so it's pretty bad. Within the underperformance of Visceral, Dead Space and Dead Space 2, two very good um, horror games, <laughs> only sold... Get how many copies do you think that game sold? I don't know, probably. Remember, they underperformed. Oh, they underperformed. Yeah, they underperformed. Okay, I'm going to say about 100,000. They sold 4 million copies. Wait, what? They sold 4 million copies. Wait, so you're telling me, <laughs> and you're telling our audience, yes. that underperformance is 4 mil. To EA, yes. You got one, two, three, four mil in the bank account. No, no, no. That's not in the bank account. That's how I was mi- making a reference to a song. Oh, well. <laughs> I am so in with the pop culture. But yes, um, yeah, four four million copies at sixty bucks a copy is underperforming according to EA. Underperforming. EA use. But there's more. The reason why I'm I'm happy they're transparent about why they're doing this. Okay, I ain't got all less. Okay, so in the article in, in the article on EA's website, they give a good explanation, not exactly, as to I why mean, it's a good corporate explanation. These they're talking to their investors. They don't. They're talking to their investors. Anywho, <laughs> so they basically, first paragraph is a whole lot of hoo-ha of our industry, blah, blah, blah. The first paragraph, the first sentence of the second paragraph was honestly what caught my eye. Our visceral studio has been developing an action adventure title set in the Star Wars universe. All right. In its current form, it was shaping up to be a story-based linear Adventure game. Ooh, I like adventures. Okay, so it's Star Wars. We have an established story. So if it's not going to be story based linear, are you gonna is it I mean it has to be story based. Uh, I and that would only make sense. So it's gonna be story based non linear with like branching paths. So are we going fable here? What what are we doing? Next sentence. Throughout the development process, we have been testing the game concept with players, listening to the feedback about what and how they want to play, and closely tracking fundamental shifts in the marketplace. Spoiler alert, no they haven't. If anyone has had the unfortunate uh, uh, unfortunate time to try the Battlefield, the, 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 the... Star Wars. Yeah, the, that Star Wars beta, you know, the one that terribly sucked, the one that I, I was actually in... A friend of mine's house and they actually had they had two routers in the house because they're just the, those sort of people they couldn't connect to the same router and play but when they connect to different routers in the same house it 
miraculously worked because, you know, EA matchmaking is just amazing. So it has become clear that to deliver an experience that players will want to come back and enjoy for a long time to come, we need to pivot the design. Did you really know? We will maintain the stunning vehicles, authenticity in the Star Wars universe, and focus on bringing a Star Wars story to life. Importantly, we are shifting the game to be a broader experience that allows for more variety and player agency, leaning into the capabilities of our frostbite engine and reimagining the cent- reimagining central elements of the game to give players a Star Wars adventure of greater depth and breadth to explore. Say what? This move leads to a few other changes. Okay, no. Okay, <laughs> this... Okay, Broader, that's so that's so generic broader exp- so you so you're trying to make an you're, you're trying to make an mmo you're trying to make a star wars then a, a, they already have that yes it's called knights of the old republic why right. then why? people literally log into there after carrie fisher passed away i remember that yes yes they did why? Why? Why are they screwing up? Like, why are they screwing up with something that that was? Why are they screwing up with a story that was that was working? Why are they screwing up with something that, well, maybe not in the hands of EA would be good? I mean, you have it. We can't necessarily take it away from you, but I don't think that because a limited... Star Wars is a money grab. But still, like, it's it, it's not like story based linear single player games don't work. Hint, 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 check my Facebook page for that picture. But seriously, it's not like they don't work. I've played many a single player game and I was like, wow, this is actually really good. But back to this craptastic, uh, craptastic show. A development team across EA Worldwide Studios will take over development of this game led by a team of EA Vancouver that has already begun working on the project. Our visceral studio will be ramping down and closing, and we're in the midst of shifting as many of our team as possible to other projects and teams of EA. Oh, at least they're not firing them and giving them the boot. Most of them. Yeah, they're just ripping away everything that was good about them and inputting inputting the McDonald's quality of EA into them. I just... I'm not surprised. I'm not shocked. I'm not... It's... I'm disappointed. I'm severely disappointed, and I and I'm, I'm Battlefront Two. I'm I'm not gonna waste my money on. I will gladly watch a YouTube video of someone else playing it, or maybe go to someone else's house. But I am not putting my money in this. I I I cannot. Though I will say though, I'm glad that we left off on this because it leads us to our main topic of of this podcast, and that is the idea of games as services. So. Uh, let me let me break this down a little bit. Games as we know them right now are typically a one-time purchase. You pay your 35, 45, 60, and then a- additional DLC, but you only pay for the game once. You pay for the game and it's yours. I feel, or the thought process that I have is that that will be changing very soon, where it will be less of a You own the video game and you are actually paying for the ability to access the content. For example, there's already two things like this out now. I believe it's called PlayStation Now on Sony and Game Pass with Xbox. You can access a variety of titles, a a, a library of them, large, um, maybe not as big as Netflix, but the idea is still the same, where you pay a subscription fee to access them. You can stream them and download them to your PS4 or your Xbox. But then after that, if you don't pay the subscription fee, you don't get the games. Now, I had spoken to a few. Um, one, uh, one person who I talked to a lot about more of the hardware and technical side of things. He had mentioned that the, the, the crisis of Marvel versus Capcom on, uh... on, uh, the PlayStation store. Where yeah. people were clamoring to get it before it was gone. And I was thinking to myself, well, what are they talking about? Why Why wouldn't you be able to get it? Well, the license for the game was going to be pulled. And I'm like, wait a minute. They can do that? Well, yeah. If the company 
wants to pull the license, they totally can. So, yeah, just like when Disney pulls licenses for certain movies on Netflix, even though I didn't get a chance to watch it yet. <sighs> well, but just imagine that. Imagine you playing, and mind you, this is a generic title for a game, and maybe it will actually come out, um, Black Queer JRPG 4. I see what you did there. Anyway. <laughs> so imagine that this is, so imagine that this is available on, let's just say, um, I'm, I'm just going to throw this out there on, on the virtual console, but this is a subscription thing because we know that this is something that Nintendo was thinking about doing, um, way back when, when we were just getting news about the Nintendo Switch. Oh uh, yeah, that is true. Now, if you don't get to finish the game, but the license gets pulled, what then? Do you just wait for the game to come back in circulation? I mean, they've already got their money from you. I think this circles back to our conversation from last time about a couple of us having sort of tension spans. Because if I'm playing a game, because I like to take my time on games. Okay. But if they take it away and it's not coming back. Okay, if they take it away in May and it's not coming back until December. Well, here's the thing. Just like, with Net, just like at Netflix, do you know when things are going to be pulled? Do you know when things are going to be coming back? You, you you don't. Yeah, you got to rely on Buzz and other articles to let you know what's going on with that. But wait, let me take it one step further. So we know that Sony does this and Microsoft does this. What's stopping companies like, I don't, I don't know, Gearbox to do this? Like just game companies. Let's say, for example, Gearbox comes out with Borderlands 3. And, <laughs> and in order to access Borderlands 3, you don't go to GameStop and get the game. You actually go to Gearbox's website. You pay 10, 11 bucks to access the game. Now, mind you, a AAA title typically costs somewhere around 60, 65, sometimes 70 bucks. That's a lot of money. It is. Now, it typically doesn't take people more than a month if they're really deep into it to finish the game. But, in the event that people have short attention spans and they start the game and then they go do something else, well, next month comes around, will you still be paying that subscription to access it? Or are you dead in the water? Because remember, you don't own anything. Remember the whole debacle with Xbox where oh they were like, you know, you don't own the game. We, you, you bought a license. You bought a digital copy from us, but you can't give it to someone else. You have oh, to, yeah. you, have, you, have to <laughs> you have to sell the license back to Microsoft so that we can get the money when we give that same digital code to someone else. And then Sony comes around and is like, hey, let's show you how to share games. And it's literally them giving someone else the game. Just giving them the biggest finger to Microsoft. Just but flipping the bird. But what's, what is really stopping a company from doing that? Because at least, especially with this whole Activision thing and, and patenting the idea of microtransactions... What is stopping companies from just like, man, you know what? If Netflix and some people are, are doing this and getting all this money, what's stopping us? You know, this this brings to mind the fact that if some company, I don't know, who 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 made Half Life? Valve. Yeah, if they were if they decide to do this, the only way you can get Half Life three was through that. I ooh. Do you know how many do you know how many ooh. people would be throwing their money? Ooh. Do you know how many people would be throwing their money right ooh. now as we speak? See, in this, uh, and this, I don't see, okay, I see this getting out of hand very quickly because we already have issues with Netflix and Hulu, particularly in our location with Chicago, where they have tried to essentially tax us, stream, tax the streaming things. <laughs> like, <laughs> you remember that. Yeah. And I'm about to cancel, well, I did cancel everything because... Reasons. Reasons. But it was just like that whole thing. Like, is this a whole nother how how's this going to be 
mon not monetized. What's the word I'm looking for? Moderated? Um, how how yes, is it going to be controlled? Given, I was about to say, what does the FDA do? Not much. But anyway. <laughs> Ooh, okay. We don't come... This, this is a gaming podcast. We try not to come after the FDA. We try. <laughs> oh, man. But, like... How who's gonna moder- who's gonna moderate this? Who's gonna keep things niche? Because that is the issue with these when new things come out. It's like when Uber and Lyft happen. I, Nobody, everybody, and their mama could suddenly get on the road and yeah, make a that, buck or two. Yeah, that was a terrible idea. I like, mean, I, I, hey, hey, and I'm all for giving opportunity to people, but. Not everyone can do everything, nor should everyone it, like, do this, everything. It's like. Capcom and EA and... Oh, did you know EA already has something like this? No, because I don't like them like that. EA All I... Access. You... It is something Y'all available. can't see it, but I rolled my eyes so hard, I swear. Mm-hmm. I just saw Jesus. You can actually pay EA 15 bucks a month and you can access whatever content that they have available, which sounds amazing. But I really feel like something like that will if, get out of hand. What about games you finished but you want to come back to because it was... What if they did that to, like, Bravely Second and you couldn't go back to it? Okay, I hope that Nintendo has the foresight to not do that because... But you get what no, I'm saying? and I do. And you, you, you were asking, who's going to moderate this? Who's going to control this? It needs to be us, the consumers. We, because here's the thing, they're not going to do it if they're not going to make money off of it. And they're not going to make money off of it if we don't give it to them. Yeah, they're going to be stubborn and try to keep it going for a year. But if they only, if they can't even flip a profit, like if honest, they can't even hit, hit where they went into. And, and this, this kind of, <laughs> this kind of ties into the, the title of this because I really feel like moving forward, this is where video games are going to go because video games are only going to get bigger. I know that that's going to happen. And because video games are going to get bigger, companies will want to have the price match the effort met towards making the video game. Sometimes. Sometimes the game could be absolute crap and they still expect you to pay a triple, a triple A price. I'm not going to say full price, a triple A price for it when your game is absolute shite. Yeah. But I feel like they're definitely going to try and get away with this. And unfortunately... People buy into it because people like new things. Yeah. And I can't blame them because on on the outside with the marketing that can go into it and everything, it's shiny, it's new, it's convenient. Everybody wants things to be convenient. We are a generation of instant gratification and just... Well, let's face it, if I don't have, I already don't have to really leave my house if I want to buy a game, but I don't, you know, have a memory card. But if I can just stream that game and be happy. Yeah, I, I, but me as a professional gamer, I want to own my games. I want to show off my collection. I can't show off a digital collection of something that I don't actually own. I can't print off the digital license for like, Persona Seven. Like I want to actually, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I want to actually own that, and I won't be able to. Like, what's the point of, at that point? Truly, why even buy a console if everything's just going to be streamed? Because of course, there's the logic that people are going to use. Well, well, Mister Gamer, you can still go out and buy the hard copy and put it in your cute little collection. Mm. I want to stay in my PJs and sip hot cocoa. And play Borderlands 5.0. If that were the case, because not every single video game goes physical. For example, do you know how, do you know how to get, do you know how to get the physical copy of Sonic Mania? There's a physical copy? Yes, there is a physical copy of Sonic Mania. Only available in the collector's edition. I didn't even know there was a physical copy. Yeah, because I was looking so hard. Like, why can't I just find a copy? Or like the Phoenix Wright game. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, not every single game is going physical. It's it, it's it's easier to go digital, but I I I like actually owning it. Not to mention I've only got I I have significantly more physical space than I have memory on my hard drive. Like come on, especially with how big games are nowadays. With, with their patches and their updates and everything else. 30 years from now, people are going to think you sound so retro. Yeah. 
Yeah, they yeah. they probably will. But 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 that that but you're starting to see my point. What's like what what's the point of me owning a console if everything's just going to be streamed? I might as well just stick with PC. But I love True. console. True. I want to actually own my video games. I want to play them on my time. I don't want to have some subscription fee. I don't want to pay fifteen bucks for five hundred video games that I might not even play. Hence why I just go and buy the movies I want to watch consistently. But, <laughs> but, it's, and this was actually pointed out to me by Mr. Gamer's mom. What I'm about, off. <laughs> what about the people who don't have that level of engagement? For example, what about people who want to play a variety of different things? That, that's actually amazing for them. The ones who are just like, I've always wanted to try Dead Island. I've always wanted to try Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. But oh why would you goodness. ever try that, try that atrocity of a video game? Oh my goodness. It could be like Netflix and Hulu. Like, ah, uh, EA game original. Oh God. Okay. Can we, can we, can we, can we oh, not? God. Oh Lord. I want an empire game now. That would be hilarious. What? It, it's, it's a so don't. Think of a My Little Pony game and for reference, if, if we're going to do this. Well, you're like Empire. What's Empire? I know Empire as far as baseball. It's a show. Oh, okay. About singers. Oh. And family drama. Black family drama. Gotta add that in there. Oh. And there's drugs involved, so that's where, that's as far as we're going to get into. Viewers, if you... Oh, viewers, oh. audience, if you guys would like to... Uh, okay. Explain that to him in the comments. You can. Oh, all right then. I'm a. I'm just gonna Google search that later. But I'm, th- I'm concerned that this is kind of where companies are going to go. And for, I, I guess it's it it it's okay for some. But here's here here's the kind of like one of the last points I want to end on. Obviously, this isn't going to be terrible. It, it's not going to be the end of the world as long as we still have the choice to own it. I am not okay with anything where we. Where this is the only way that we can access games. Where this kind of like a rent to buy, rent to own type of system. Not even rent to own, <laughs> just straight up renting. Where you never own it. Where they can pull it if they want. And no, you I'm have saying a, what you would like at the very least. I don't know. I don't want rent to own. I want rent or. I don't. I don't. Oh. I want rent or this. Give me this or this. Don't take one choice away from me. I'm the consumer. I'm spending my money. I want to have that choice of what exactly I'm spending my money on. I understand the importance of this of this streaming service. You're 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 giving the ability for a different type of people to take advantage of absorbing your content. Great. Not everybody can sell us sixty dollars per game. That's fine. And obviously, you're only going to be getting the old stuff anyway. But don't take away my ability to get the physical copy and own it myself because some people actually want to own their games. Some people want to own the video games for modding purposes, which is fine. I'm learning how wonderful modding is with Fallout New Vegas. But the fact of the matter is, I still want to have that choice. And I don't want that to be taken away from me, but I'm concerned that because money-grubbing companies are, well, just that, money-grubbing that... If it's a money grab, it's money grab. Go dee 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 dee. All that. And I and I really feel like they're going to be doing that. So let me know what you think about that. Hit me up on Twitter and on Facebook, uh, Tumblr. If you listen on Tumblr, is Google Plus still a thing? Yes, I think so. Yes. So hey, hit me up on any of those social medias. Tell me what you think about that. Am I just talking complete crap? Are you actually concerned? Do you give a crap? Are you curious how how good my beard is growing? Let me know. <laughs> Uh, I mean, if you guys want to know how I've been, you can ask me too, I guess, since we're talking about personal grooming habits. Yes, but with that being said, this is Mr. Gamer and Miss Kitty the Vol signing off.